Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about the WinGet package manager that helps me install and manage applications running on Windows. If we think about it today, I have my computer and on my computer, for it to be any use, I need to install applications. So what I have to do is I go to the website of the application manufacturer. I go and search for the download link. I install it, go through whatever wizard it has. And then I have lots of different applications installed. And then periodically I go and check, was there a newer version available for me? And then I have to go through the install process. If I ever change my machine, I have to do the whole thing all at once for every application. So package managers are gold around simplifying that for the end user to find applications, install applications, update applications, uninstall applications, and even apply complete application configurations to a particular machine. Now these are not new. Linux has had packet managers forever. It's very common to use YAM or APT or whatever to manage that install and, and update of applications. There's things like Chocolatey for Windows has been around for a while to again help with that idea. But now we have WinGet, which is natively just available in Windows. Now, my focus for this talk is about being a consumer of the applications. There are functions within WinGet to help me create the manifest files and actually make applications available, but I'm not focused on that. This is all about, as the consumer, simplifying my experience for application installs. Now, if we think about WinGet, it's, it's Windows 10. So I'm thinking, hey, Windows 10 and above, so obviously 11 as well. It was Windows 10, I think 1709, which was a long, long time ago. And the way this works is WinGet gets installed on my machine. As soon as I authenticate to the machine, it goes and connects up to the Microsoft Store. So if we think about cloud repositories of applications, one of the big ones available to me is the Microsoft Store. We're used to going into the store application on Windows and we can see a whole list of applications and we can install them. And the store app in Windows helps me update those. It goes and periodically says, was there a, a new version available? and will install it. So this WinGet on my first login goes and gets pulled down from the Microsoft Store. So in a way that's our first exposure to using a library of applications. We use the Microsoft Store all the time, but there are others out there as well. Not everything is published to the Microsoft Store. Now, one thing to focus on at the start, when I use WinGet, it's just a command. I open up a command prompt and I type WinGet, and we're gonna see this. Now, some applications will want to run with elevated privileges. So that's where you'll get prompted to, hey, do you want to elevate up? If I start my command prompt elevated, then I won't see those. So I might see a difference in functionality on if I launch my command prompt window as elevated, if you just remember push uh, the shift key and right click on the icon and do run as administrator, you're now running elevated, which means you won't see those elevation prompts because you're already running with all of the full permissions. So with that said, it's probably good just to quickly see it. So if we jump over for a second, so here in my environment, now you can see I am running as elevated because if you look at the title of the application, we can see right here, it says administrator colon. So that means I'm running with elevated permissions. So just in this regular window, if I just type winget dash dash info, then it gives me some basic information about my environment. Now the first thing I can see is the Windows Package Manager version I am running is this v1.5 and it's a preview version and it gives you a bunch of different information about the settings and the logs, um, various statements, and some administrator settings as well down the bottom. So this is just basic information about 
what we have with our Winget. And this will get updated automatically as part of those interactions actually with the Microsoft Store. So great, that's the tool, but where does it actually go and get things from? So we have sources where Winget can go and look and say, well, is this application available? Is there an update available? And so we already talked about one of them. So if I think about the sources available for Winget, so where can it go and search for information about applications? So the Microsoft Store is one of them. But the other one that's built in, so there are two sources that are just native, is a Winget specific repository that's actually hosted up on GitHub. So there's an actual repo where the manifest files are stored that describe the applications. So with the Microsoft Store, so these behave in slightly different ways. With the Microsoft Store, when I have an application, what is all stored within the Microsoft Store? What I mean by that is if I think about an app, well that app has information about uh, metadata, name of it, the version, tags, and it contains the actual package to perform the installation. So it's all stored in there. Whereas with Winget, what we get stored here is the manifest file, i.e. the description, but the actual package to install it, that's somewhere else. It could be in another GitHub repo, it could be on a content delivery network native to the app. It's just described and linked to from GitHub. So there's a slight difference in how they interact. But now, both of these are available by default as sources for Winget. Now you can add others. So these are the built-in ones, but I can absolutely go ahead and add custom. Maybe, for example, I have some site within my company where I have line of business applications and I want to make those available. So I can go and add those as well. Now, if we go and quickly look, so let's go back to our terminal for a second. So if we go and look in here, if, let's clear this out. If I do winget source list, it's gonna tell me what is it currently configured with. And as I can see from here, what I currently have is that Microsoft Store and Winget. And for Winget, it's saying, hey, it's a content delivery network, .winget .microsoft.com, and it's a cache. Now, what's actually happening here is if I was to open up a browser window for a second. So firstly, Winget has great documentation. It goes through all of those different commands that I'm gonna show many of as part of this. And it talks about, hey, Winget source list, MS store Winget, but also the ability you can add a new source. But for Winget, the actual GitHub repo is here. So this is the repository it's using. And if we look at what is it storing, I can go and look at the manifest files. They're stored alphabetically, so I could go and look at something like Discord. So we do D, and then we'll go and find uh, Discord, which I could hopefully find there we go, Discord, because it's got different versions. And if we look at a specific version, then we see the main manifest file that is just describing it. So that's the information. And then what we'll also see is the installer information where it links to where is the actual package. So in this case, it's stored on this dl.discordapp.net, which is probably some kind of content delivery that it uses content delivery network, but this gives us the information, it gives us installer modes, it gives us what is it supporting, and the type of installer, the manifest version, and there may even be language specific um, locale descriptions that we can use. So it's going, it's going off to this git repo to go and check these. Now these manifest files are maintained, well it varies, it's a Git repo. 
So what's happening is either the manufacturer of the application creates a new manifest file, and there are tools available to do this, and submits a pull request, which tells the maintainers of this repo, hey, check it, make sure it looks valid. Uh, once you commit that pull request, you accept it, then it will just show up. It could be individuals as well. There might be good hearted individuals out there that are just trying to make more apps available for the community. They submit the pull request with the metadata in, it gets validated and then it's available to us. So these are the sources that when I go and hey, look for an application, it's going to find those. And again, I can add my own custom ones if I want to. Now there are various features available in Winget. Now there's very basic things like, hey, I can search, I can list what I have, I can install, I can uninstall, export, import. But there may be experimental things. Now, I think some of this varies depending on the version you're using. But once again, if I was to jump over here for a second, if I was to run Winget features, and I think this is more of a preview, I have different features that I can go and enable if I want to. So if you go and look, there might be other things that interest you. I do have a configuration. If I do Winget settings, it will open up a JSON file in whatever my editor is. For example, maybe it's uh, VS Code. What it's done is it's opened that over here. And there are various things I can add in as part of, hey, what's some special configuration I want done as part of this. And again, the documentation does a great job of going through what these various options actually are. Okay, that's great. So those are, are really the basics behind it. But what can I do with it? Well, the first thing I may actually want to do is what do I have currently installed? And one of the really nice things here, if I do winget list, it's gonna go and search my machine. But the key part here is it doesn't have to have been installed with winget. If you look in all this list of applications, if we look in this far right hand column, we have source. And sure, some of them say Winget, some of them might say MS Store, but a whole bunch don't. But this is showing me everything that it can find out about that is installed on my machine. So even though I've maybe never used Winget, obviously I have a few times here, but even if I'd never used it, I still will be able to see all these various applications. Now I might wanna find out information about a particular app that I have on my machine. And this is a key part. When I'm doing winget list, so this list command is focused on my machine. This is not searching some repository out there. When I'm doing winget list, what I'm looking at here is what do I have installed on my box? So if I think about over time, I'm getting various applications installed on my machine, and they have various metadata and versions associated. When I run the list command with winget, it's looking at my local machine and what is installed. That's the key part about what we're doing with list. It's not searching the repositories, it's saying, what do I have locally on the machine? And it can give me some nice information about them. So again, if we jump back over here, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, but I could look for a particular app. So show me information about OBS Studio. I know I use that a lot. So it's showing me, okay, yep, this is your OBS. And hey, look, there's a, a newer version available right there. I could also do dash dash name. I could also use tags. So, hey, show me applications maybe I have, uh, let's try chat. I don't know if I have anything with chat, probably Teams. Okay, no. Um, notepad. So I've got Windows Notepad. So you can search for different categories of applications that I may have available on my machine. So I can go and see what I have right now. So it's not just, hey, if it was installed, with Winget, it's not just things in the repo, I can go and use it to look at what we have. Now the next thing I'm liable to wanna to do is, I want to install something, I wanna find an application. So what we can then use is the search command. So the whole point of the search command is, absolutely as the name suggests, when I run search, what I'm doing here 
is I'm looking against all of those sources that have been registered. So hey, I'm trying to find a certain application and maybe I'm searching by part of the app name. Maybe I'm searching using those tags because again, we have all this nice metadata that includes tagging. We saw that when I looked at that GitHub, we could see in the manifest there were tags associated with it. So I can use Winget search to try and find some application actually on my machine. So if we go back over to here, okay, I want to find something. Um, so I'll do Winget search. Now I can just type the name or I can do Q code, it's doing exactly the same. So there's lots of apps here that have something to do with coding. And we can see the various sources. So I can see some of them, you can see it's searching. The first batch can be found in the Microsoft Store. All the rest of them can be found um, in Winget. And one of the things you will notice in the Microsoft Store, the version always shows as unknown. This is a issue right now that the Microsoft Store doesn't correctly tell you a version. And so it used to just say latest. Well, the problem with saying latest is Winget would interpret that as always meaning there is a newer version because latest wouldn't match what was the actual version ID on the local machine. So it would always tell you there's a new version. So they just change it to unknown. So that will probably change in the future once the Microsoft Store sends out a valid version, but you'll always see unknown if the source is the Microsoft Store. So it's finding me all these names that have um, code in them. Likewise, I can use that same tagging. So maybe I want to search for applications that have been tagged as a chat app. So now I can see, okay, if I look up here, well, there's some in the Microsoft Store. Okay, Zoom, WhatsApp, WeChat, Tim, Revolt, a whole bunch of different applications available here. Now I might wanna get more information about one of these applications. So then I can do show. So I could say, hey, show me information about, uh, maybe it's the Microsoft Power Toys, for example. And so if I think about that manifest file that is both in the Microsoft Store and is in the Winget GitHub repository, well now it's showing it to me. Notice it's showing me all of the information about things like, well, what are its tags? So if I search for any of those as an item, it's gonna find it for this app. It's gonna show me the installer. So in this case, hey, the installer is in its own repo, power toys, releases, et cetera, et cetera. So I can go and get specific information. I could search for information on an app from a specific source. So I could say, hey, Winget show OBS, and I only want to show me the source where it's Winget. Sure enough, it works. I could say, show me what versions are available. So I do dash dash versions at the end of it down here. So I'm just adding, it's dash dash, not one dash. So you'll see it's dash dash if it's a word, it's a single dash if it's just the letter. And I can see all oh, those different versions. So I could, if I wanted, go and install a specific version of the application. So I can search and then I can go and get more information and I can do show to get more detail about maybe that particular app to work out, oh, is that the one I really, really want? Once I have that, well now it's time I wanna take one of these apps and get it on my machine. And this is very obvious, it's gonna be installed. So I want to install an app from one of these things. And I can be as vague or as specific as I want to be. So if we go and look over here, and let's clear this out again. So now you want to actually do the installation well, it would just be Winget install and the name. So it could be OBS. I maybe want to install a particular version. So I could do version, I'm just making that up. And again, if I could just do dash V, so it's just a single letter. So it's dash dash a word or single dash if it's just the letter for what I want to install. And it would then go and pull that down automatically for me. 
Now I could also tell it a particular source. I could say, well, I actually wanna pull it from this particular source. Maybe I wanna get it from the Microsoft Store. Maybe I want to go and get it from an actual uh, Winget, or maybe it's some custom one. I could add that in as part of the install. And there's IDs, when I did that, the show and the search, there's an ID as well. So I could use the, the dash ID if I want to go and get a specific ID instead of based on the name. So I have a lot of flexibility with that. So it's super, super easy. So now I have all these apps and new versions come out. And what's great here is, well, is there an upgrade available? Now I can, I use the word um, upgrade. You can use the word update. It does the same thing. I wanna get new versions, so I can do upgrade. Now what upgrade will do is it will tell me, hey, for these apps that are on my machine, there is a newer version available. So just doing upgrade on its own will not do the upgrade. So if I just run this command, this will just tell me. Then what I have to do, well I can do one of two things. I can upgrade a particular app, or I can say dash dash all. If I do this, it will actually perform the upgrade. Either the specific app I mentioned, or all of the upgrades that are available to me. So I, I control that, I have that choice. And once again, remember, it doesn't matter if it was installed with Winget. If it knows about the app through that list, if I do Winget upgrade, it will show me every upgrade that's available for anything installed on my machine. It's a really, really powerful thing. So I don't have to have started using it, but I can start using it now. So on my machine, if I was to run Winget upgrade, it's just gonna tell me again, it's not doing anything. It's saying, hey, these are available to you. So I might say, okay, let's do win get upgrade and we'll upgrade uh, GIMP, the graphical editor. So it's downloading it from the source. So in this case, it's available from download.gimp.org. So again, with WinGet, it's just a metadata stored in the Git repo. The actual binaries, the ones and zeros that make up the package could be anywhere. So it's pulling it down for me. It's gonna, it has a description in the manifest of what to do in an upgrade scenario. So it might just be doing an install, whatever that may be. It may require some interaction. There might be different things I can configure on this, but essentially at this point, it's gonna go away. And I'm just doing it with a single application, but obviously what would be very common, so what's interesting over here, just open it up, it's fired off the little GUI to go and perform that actual install for me. If I was, while that's running, if we was to go and actually look at the manifest for GIMP, just out of pure curiosity. So if we go and look for GIMP, if I can find it again. GIMP, oh, GIMP, GIMP, there we go. We can see all the different versions are available to me find the latest one. And it will tell you about the installer and it's got here upgrade behavior. So it's upgrade behavior is to do an install. It tells me all the file associations for it, different installers for different architectures. So we can see all of that great information about that. Meanwhile, that setup is still running. But you can see how simple it was. I didn't have to go and launch GIMP and go and search for it. Well, is there a check versions button or any of that? It just goes and does it for me. So this is just now gonna sit and run in the background. But again, my other option here, well, I could do multiple apps or I could just do that dash dash all. So if I do the dash dash all, then, well, exactly as the name suggests, it will just go and upgrade them all. So maybe weekly, I could just open this up and I'll do, hey, uh, win get upgrade and I'll have a quick look and then I'll just do a win get upgrade dash dash all 
and go and grab myself a bowl of cereal or something while it updates every app on my machine, whether I installed it with Winget or not, to that nice new version. So that's part of the capabilities for this. And that's why I think it's so powerful. I don't have to have started off using this at all. And that's finished. So now if I ran that Winget upgrade again, GIMP has gone because it's upgraded it. There's nothing more for it to do there. So that is a, a really, really cool capability um, to be able to do that. So I think this, that, that's huge, so that ability to really simplify all of the updates and not have to go through all those manual things. And notice I didn't have to click anything in that GIMP install. It was essentially unattended. It just goes and fired it off and it will do them in series. It won't run them all in parallel and maybe cause conflicts because a lot of times it doesn't like running multiple installers at the same time. So it will just go through in series and update all of the apps that have an upgrade available. Now again, if you weren't running as administrator, maybe some of them you'd get a user access control prompt to elevate up your permissions. It depends how it's installing. Is it a per user? Is it a per machine? So that that could have some variation on the particular installer. And then of course, a key bit of functionality is, will I get fed up with an app after a while? So if I get fed up with an application eventually, I wanna uninstall it. So it does that as well. So I can obviously uninstall. And exactly as the name suggests, hey, win, get, uninstall, uh, dash, dash, the name, the name of the app. I can add a version. I could do it by um, the ID. So I could do dash ID and then the GUID of the application. So I would just do a win, get list. And then from the list, it would tell me, and then I can do a win, get, uninstall. So I, I can, hey, I don't want this thing anymore. And again, I don't want to have to open up an installer or anything else to remove it. Uh, I'll just use my package manager that is Winget. And that's really the, the whole point behind it. Now, one other thing I really like about this Winget is, hey, over time, I've installed a whole bunch of different applications. And periodically, we reinstall our machines. Maybe we get a nice new shiny machine, or maybe every six months or a year, we just like to reinstall and, and clean slate the thing. So one of the things I can do with Winget is an export. So here, if I do a winget export, what it's gonna do is generate out for me a JSON file. And that JSON file, exactly as you expect, is going to list out the details on all of the applications I have installed. Now as part of that export, I could say, don't tell me the version information just tell me the applications. Because obviously the other thing I'm going to do with this is import. So when I have my shiny new machine, I can point it to that JSON file, and now every app I have listed in there, it can import them in. Now if I did have version information in there, it doesn't matter. There is an ignore versions parameter on the import. So it, whether there's versions exported or not, if I don't export the versions, Hey, it's just gonna install the newest ones when I do an import. If I do have the versions, well, if I import, it will install that version. Or if I do the ignore versions during the import, then it won't. It will just take the latest version that is available to me and I'll just get the nice, shiniest code. And that's it. So that is the point of Winget. This is not super complicated, it's not magic, it's not some brand new concept that Microsoft have created. The idea of a package manager has been around for a really long time. There again have been package managers for Windows for a while. But this is now just natively built in to Windows. Hey, I log on, it's gonna go and pull it down from the Microsoft Store. It's gonna configure these two sources by default, the Microsoft Store and the Winget repository. I can go and add my own if I want to, if I have some corporate line of business store where I want to be able to integrate with Winget. But it really makes it easy to manage all of the applications. I can see what I have on my machine, whether I installed it with Winget or not. I can go and find apps. I can see detail about them. I can install them. I can easily upgrade a particular app or all applications. I can uninstall. And I can even say, hey, I've had this machine now for a year. 
or maybe just periodically, let's export all the apps so that ever if I reinstall, I don't have to manually go and even type in the WinGet or try and remember what I had. I'll just import this JSON file. And we'll go and put all the latest versions or particular versions if that's what I want. So that was it. Uh, as always, I hope this video was useful. Till next one, take care.